Hello, and welcome to the Future of Safety Science, the webinar series that connects leaders in safety research and standards to the next generation of problem solvers. I'm Dr. Kelly Kina with UL Research Institutes, and I'm grateful to be your host for this series, where we investigate the big questions, beginning with, how is the world engineered to keep us safe? Each episode extends our work to you through dynamic conversations that describe our view of safety and sustainability, drill down into specific inquiries and research, and describe the process and impacts of global standards. Today's episode will help us understand the science, global impact, and safety of something that's in everyone's home. It's likely that you have five or more of these around you right now, and it is certain that the way you are viewing this episode is on a device powered by the very thing that today's guest studies, lithium ion batteries. As part of UL Research Institute's Electrochemical Safety Research Institute, led by Dr. Judy Givarajan, our guest today investigates the safety and performance limits of energy technologies. So let's get started. I'm pleased to introduce my colleague for this conversation. Dr. Vallabha Rika is a lithium ion battery scientist with nine years of experience in the development and testing of batteries for electric vehicles and stationary applications. He developed a method for rapid and effective formation of solid electrolyte interface, which you're about to hear a lot about. Um, this is the, called the SEI layer on the anode surface in lithium ion batteries. Dr. Ricca is also skilled at in situ, ex situ, operando characterization of electrode and electrolyte interfaces and identifying failure analysis of lithium ion batteries. He is currently a postdoctoral researcher at UL Research Institutes and our guest on the future of safety science today. Dr. Ricca, welcome. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kelly, for your kind introduction. Good morning, all, and welcome to uh, my today webinar presentation. I would like to thank our Vice President, Dr. Judy Jeevarajan, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to talk about lithium and battery technology from global perspective view. Well, today, 12 main technologies I just showed in uh, Schematic, present, uh, schematic view from mobile internet, cloud technologies, advanced robotics, even automobile industries to renewable energies, 3D printing and energy storage systems are influencing our world fleet. Among all, renewable energies and energy storage technologies are at forefront and playing a significant role in changing the world into a greener place. On the other hand, the automobile industries are consuming fossil fuels around 60%, 60 percent of fossil fuels and releases greenhouse gas emissions causing global warming today. So it is important to note that if we can adopt and integrate the renewable energy sources and energy storage technology to the automobile industries, then it will be an ultimate and alternative solution for the global warming. As a result, we can see the reduction in fossil fuel economy and improves the ecological and the today modern society life. So these batteries are basically in two types, primary batteries, which is also denoted as dry cells. And these are one time usable due to the main components of these primary batteries, such as the cathode, anode, and electrolytes are irre electrochemically irreversible, whereas the secondary batteries also denoted as rechargeable batteries. These batteries are reusable due to their active components, 
such as cathode and anode electrolytes are electrochemically reversible. So these devices are, we are seeing in our daily uh, uses in our portable electronics devices and it is, it is also deploying into heavy duty industries today. So there are many different energy storage technologies are available. Among them, batteries and fuel cells are having high energy density, whereas the capacitors and the supercapacitors are high power densities. The high energy density, these, these devices, we can be used for store the uh, renewable energy and we can use it as a renewable energy storage grids. And then supercaps and capacitors can be useful for satellites and even sports cars, high power applications. Whereas today the batteries are developing for high energy applications as well as high power applications. If you can look at into the market, there are different types of rechargeable batteries are available which are noted as, denoted as lead, lead acid batteries, metal, uh, uh, nickel metal halide batteries, and the lithium batteries. Among them, lithium batteries are having high energy densities as well as high power densities. So why these lithium batteries are superior than other, other batteries, if you can consider, if you can look at into the a lithium metal properties. The lithium is a lightest metal and it is comes under the alkaline metal groups. So if you can look at the electronic structure configuration, it has one single valency electron, henceforth the, it has highly reactive and it has highest reduction, negative reduction potential with compared with the hydrogen uh, a reference um, electrode. And also it has highest specific capacity. So these properties made superior to this lithium battery technology. And today the lithium battery technologies are denoting with their cathode chemistries. We can call it as NMC, LP or NCA in the markets. So basically these cathode materials are made up of lithium with different transition metal oxides, whereas the anode materials are mostly used in commercial cells, either carbon-based uh, materials such as the graphite, carbon nanotubes, uh, and uh, the silicon and the germanium are either it is a composite of all uh, three uh, metals. Whereas the electrolyte is made up of lithium salt and this lithium salt is dissolved in organic solvents. These, all are, these organic solvents are highly flammable. That's why the, the lithium battery technology needs the safety precautions. So if you can look at the working principle of this lithium battery, this lithium battery uh, consists mainly three main components as we discussed in earlier. The cathode consists of a lithium uh, ion source, whereas the anode acts as a lithium host and the electrolyte acts as a medium for lithium transportation during the charging and discharging. For example, when you are charging the mobile during that process, the lithium ions moves from the cathode to anode and the voltage uh, slowly it increases. And uh, during the usage of our mobile, the lithium ions moves from anode to cathode and then the voltage slowly it is reduces. So the uses time of our mobile, for example, it depends on, it, de it depends on the properties of both cathode and anode materials. Well, the lithium ion battery consists many uh, lithium ion cells and which are connected in series and parallel configuration. When we are talking about series, the lithium ion cells polarities means the lithium ion cells are connected in opposite polarity and which is meant for increases the voltages. Whereas in parallel connection, all cells 
are connected in a similar pro um, and all uh, same pro uh, polarities are connected in the same direction so these are meant for high current applications so uh, when you are connecting the cells in series the voltage will increases whereas in parallel connection the voltage remains the same so when you look at into the if you look at into the the large scale battery uh, systems these battery systems are connected with modules these modules are connected either in series or parallel connections each parallel connect each module again uh, connected with the protection electron protection circuit which controls the abnormal operating conditions of the uh, lithium ion cells as we discussed earlier the lithium ion batteries technology needs highly uh, safe operating conditions so these protection circuits will prevents from the overcharge over discharge even for uh, over heating of the uh, uh, self heating of the uh, cells during the uh, uses and the charging process if you can look at uh, in the market the lithium ion cells are available with the different sizes and a different geometry at a different uh, ratings so these all cells are uh, denoted with numbers the serial numbers for example if you can see the 2032 coin cell which which indicates it has 20 mm dia and 3.2 mm height similar way if you can consider the cylindrical cells 26650 means it has a 26 mm diameter and 65.0 mm uh, height so that that it represents similarly the prismatic and power cells are denoted with the ratings ampere ratings 5 ampere hour or 20 ampere hour like that and these all lithium ion cells are fabricated using different components and a different uh, fabrication processes so those details we will discuss in the coming slides and based on the cell geometry as well as cell rating the overall battery pack size uh, defines and the complexity will be uh, increases as you uh, decrease the uh, cell geometry or cell rating the complexity of the battery module is going to be increases and in order to prevents the uh, abnormal operating conditions all batteries consist the battery management systems as well as to maintain the uh, temperature within it the cooling systems will be provided so this is how the battery modules or battery system uh, looks so these battery are connected with the several cells and each cell fabrication process is a robust so if you can look at it it has a several processing uh, before um, delivering the lithium ion cell into the market so each uh, process optimization involves different engineering as well as scientific understanding and before deliver or before dispatch the cells from the manufacturing plant all lithium ion cells are undergoes to the formation process and this pro this formation process not only takes the time it is a uh, cost effective so how we can reduce the formation time and how it influences the overall cost of the cell we can discuss in the uh, for the slide and this process is called formation the formation is nothing but when you fill the electrolyte once we fill the electrolyte the active components of the lithium ion cells has to be activate this activation takes place within a few initial charge discharge cycles for example when we are charging the cell as we discussed earlier or lithium ion uh most to the anode side and uh, during the anode side we can see the anode is going to be uh, the anode particles or uh, electrodes are going to be expands different materials different anode materials have its own intrinsic properties some of the anode materials the volume expands since during the lithiation 
and uh, during the delithiations, the volume changes will be differ. Some materials, for example, graphite, the volume changes are uh, limited to 20 percentage, whereas the silicon or SN uh, tin uh, related uh, anode materials, the volume expansions exhibits more than 300 percentage. So as we are uh, saying, during initial uh, lithium cells, we can see one, uh, one layer is forming on the surface of the anode. This is during the electrochemical uh, processing and this layer forms uh, due to the decomposition of the species, the decomposition of the electrolyte at an interface of the anode. So this interface layer also denoted as uh, SCI layer or solid electrolyte interface layer. And this interface layer actually plays a dual role. One is it consumes the active lithium from the electrolyte and it prevents the further decomposition of the electrolyte at an interface of the uh, uh, anode and the electrolyte. So that's how it is playing a dual role. And this SCI layer actually dictates the performance and the safety of the, the lithium ion cell over the usage of the cycles. So our ultimate aim, we have to make very thin and stable SCI layer on the anode surface because this, this SCI layer consists or it consumes the active lithium ions. So this cathode material is limited uh, lithium sources within it. If the lithium ions will be consumed during the process of this SCA formation, then the overall cell capacity is going to be reduced. So that is one of the challenging or bottleneck for all cell manufacturers. So, and another thing is, as we have discussed, when the particles are going to be volume expansions or volume changes, what happens, the already initially formed SCA layer may break down and it is continuously consumes the electrolyte and forms a uh, continuous growth of the SCA layer. So the more amount of active lithium losses will be uh, occurs during this process. That's, that's why it is very important to control the formation of this SCA layer and we have to make it more stable SCA layer at the initial formation cycles itself. Henceforth, it will be improves the chemical stability as well as electrochemical stability and the mechanical stability of the interfaces. And then it prevents and it improves the uh, safety of the lithium ion cells. So as we discussed before connecting the cells into the module or before dispatching the cells, we are processing the SA formation method. So this takes uh, several hours as we've seen for one cycle, it will take almost 40 hours. And this type of cycles, we have to repeatedly, we have to perform at initial cycles, at in initial, in, at in beginning itself. So it will take minimum 40 to some several days. So which will, which will actually reduce the production rate of the lithium ion cells in the manufacture line. Also, it requires more number of channels. Each cell needs one power outlet to do the initial cycles. For example, if you are going to fabricate a giga, uh, if you are products, uh, if you are doing production giga level, giga uh, uh, numbers, mega plant levels, then what happens is thousands of cells you will fabricate and all cells has to connect to the uh, testing channel. So, so you may need a uh, thousand channels. So that will be cost effective and as well as it will it will occupy more space. So, so if you can consider the overall cost effective of this process, it will take 40 percentage of uh, manufacturing cost. And also what happens in order to reduce the capital, uh, capital cost of the manufacturing, now the researchers are doing uh, operating these cells at a different current rates, charging current rates. If you increase the charging rate, what happens is the time duration for the formation is going to be reduced. So when you are doing, uh, when you are increasing the charging rate, what is happening is either 
the cells going to be bulbs or the lo localized resistance increases due to that at an, a higher current rates the cells uh, within the cell the heat generation will be uh, the heat generation is going to be higher so due to this heat generation what happens is the electrolyte starts to evaporate and uh, it can uh, peel off the uh, electrode materials from the current collectors so these side effects actually actually may triggers during the formation or later on uses in the uses of the battery so that's why we are uh, trying to optimize these formation test conditions without um, uh, without the uh, the uh, showing these effects like we have to uh, mitigate the bulging effect as well as we want to activate the entire electrodes within the uh, lithium ion cell for that we have carried out uh, our research in our lab initially we have designed the in situ coin cell coin cell uh, we carried these uh, the research activities in a smaller scale to understand and to detect the characteristics of the sci layer on the surface of the anode materials for which we have made we have fabricated the state of the art of the lithium ion cell as i showed here uh, the cell fabrication process is as shown in a schematic diagram it consists of a lithium metal as a reference so as a lithium source and we have drop casted the active materials on the uh, copper mesh so this mesh can allows us to uh, 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 look at the interface of the um, sci layer on the surface and uh, these all components we assembled as a commercial uh, how the commercial uh, lithium ion cell looks as i showed here and it has a window from this window we can able to detect the able to see the the growth mechanism as well as we can study its uh, uh, electrochemical characteristics and as i said these lithium ion cells are highly these lithium ion cell components are highly uh, moisture sensitive and uh, it will react with the uh environment so we need to carry out these experiments uh using in situ setups and it requires many characterization uh procedures like for example some of the characterizations are meant for a particular applications uh, but when we want to study the uh, structural characterization or chemical characterizations these all uh, successive uh, 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 characterization tools are uh, required for uh, this kind of analysis and to understand and to study this uh, sci characteristics we have used the commercial uh, electrolyte components and these components uh, consist of uh, like we can na uh, name it as electrolyte salt and the solvents and then also additives so these additives are uh, working as it will improve the operating voltage window as well as it can improve the thermal stability of the electrolyte component and with this one we have uh, initially uh, optimized the uh, uh work means electrochemical test conditions and then we can see here this is uh, one electrochemical study which is also uh, denoted as uh, cyclic voltammetry analysis and uh, by using this study we can understand the, the overall operating voltage window of uh, these all components so in this study initially what happens we will do the discharge so what happens the lithium ions uh will leaves from the lithium metal and it will be intercalate into the uh, graphite materials so that is the first step so that process we can see here uh like from one point like for example 2 voltage to 0 voltage so that is called cell discharging process once it reaches the 0 voltage again we will charge the cell up to the initial uh, potential so during this process we have uh, identified uh different uh, current peaks some of the current peaks are uh, quite reversible 
and some of the current makes are uh, irreversible. So the reversible, uh, the reversible peaks, current peaks are indicates the uh, lithium intercalation and the deintercalation of the uh, graphite anode material, whereas uh, the irreversible current peaks are indicates the uh, SCI formation on the surface of the uh, graphite. So from this analysis, we have clearly identified that when we are discharging the cell below one voltage, uh, the particular anode, the graphite anode with, uh, with respect to the lithium metal, uh, around one voltage to 0.5 voltage, we can see the SCI uh, formation is initiated. Over the lithiation and the delithiation process, the SCI growth will be uh, uh, increases, uh, uh, it will increases. And once it forms uniform, it covers the entire surface uniformly, then what happens is the further uh, decomposition of the electrolyte or the SA growth mechanism is going to be uh, a stop. So that's what we can see. The When uh, during the uh, charging the cell, we didn't identify this irreversible uh, peak, which means that uh, during the first initial uh, cycle itself, the SA formation was completed. And to understand how this SA growth mechanism is taking place on the surface, we have carried out uh, some uh, TEM uh, microscopy analysis. We can see here in the figure A and B, it is uh, at an initial uh, lithiation, uh, before a lithiation process of the anode material. And uh, at initial state, we didn't find any uh, um, uh, growth on the surface of the anode graphite, whereas when it reaches the uh, around 1.8 voltage, we can see some kind of nucleation on the surface. And this nucleation is uh, increases over the, uh, when we are over the uh, discharging of the cell and the nucleation will join together and it will form such agglomeration. And then these agglomeration, we can see even more uh, densify when we are reducing even further voltage. Uh, when we are reducing further voltage, we can see the uh, more uh, nucleation on the surface of the graphite. And when it is uh, completed the discharge process, when we reach the point, I means uh, uh, the set uh, discharge voltage, we can see the nucleation become looks like a complete layer and it is covered the entire the surface of the uh, graphite. So this clearly indicates that in the first uh, electrochemical cycles, first discharge uh, cycles itself, the SCI forms on the surface of the graphite. And the thickness of this uh, SCI layer is around uh, 100 to 150 nanometers. So it is very less uh, 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 less thickness. So it, this we cannot able to uh, see in a, uh, with our naked eyes. So then based on these investigations, we have der derived the, uh, the growth nucleation and the growth mechanisms of this uh, SCI layer at any different uh, voltages as I showed in the schematic diagram. So uh, if we can uh, represent these two, uh, if you can compare these two images, uh, if you can see at an initial uh, up to 1.8 voltage, like before lithiation process, there are SCI nuclei and which are existed in the electrolyte medium itself. It is not at all deposited on the surface. When we have reduced the uh, cell voltage, the nucleation is slowly, it is depositing on the surface of the uh, graphite mechanic, uh, graphite electrode. And, but our aim is to reduce this formation time. When we are operating the cell at an, a lower uh, charging rate, it takes uh, minimum 40 hours to complete this process, but it will, uh, if, if this time can consume actually increases the capital cost of the cell manufacturing, right? So what we did is we have uh, increased the current rates for charging and discharging to identify the characteristics of the uh, SEI uh, uh, layer and uh, how it influences on the performance of the cell. If you can look at it here, when we are charging at lower C rate, uh, it has higher capacity and it took a very long time. When we have increased the charge rate, 
charging current rate and discharging current rate, the capacity uh, slowly it is uh, declined. It is reducing, and then the irreversible capacities are losses are very high. It is not completely recovered from the uh, graphite anode. And then we have identified the structure, how it looks on the surface of the graphite. If you can see at a lower scan rate, the thickness of the SCI layer is very less. As you are increasing the uh, current rate, the thickness of the SCI layer, as well as the morphology of the SCI layer is uh, quite changed. It is changing uh, with respect to the current rates, right? So, and when the thickness is increases, obviously it will consumes more active lithium ions. So, which is not good for uh, cell performances. So, based on these investigations, we have carried out our experiments uh, into three uh, steps. We want we optimized the test conditions for first initially uh, nucleation process. Once the nucleation will be uniform, all electrolyte components will be decomposes. Uh, uniformly then what happens is all nucleus the nucleation process on the surface of the anode will be the uh, I means uniform and it will be a very small size and what happens is during the next uh, discharge process the nucleation allows to grow uniformly and it it covers the entire the surface of the anode surface and then after nucleation process we have uh, studied carefully about the structure and its chemical composition, how the arrangements of this nucleation and the growth of the SCA layer on the surface that we have studied separately. And then in the third step, we have studied the stability of the initial formation of this SCA layer at an different charge current rates, whether those at these charge current rates, whether this SCA layer, initial formed SCA layer, whether it is stable or not. So all these three investigations actually allows us to define the optimum and the effective uh, test uh, method and which, which allows the SA growth mechanisms uniformly and systematically. We can see in first uh, up to few interval of the uh, time scan, the SCLA nucleation can occur. After that, it will covers the surface of the uh, uh, anode surface uniformly. And within the same protocol, we have uh, uh, in included the stabilization uh, process also. So these stabilization processes are involved at an higher current rates. So these all three processes are completed within the six hours. Whereas in the conventional process, the one cycle, one charge cycles or one discharge cycles, it will take 21 hours and it, it has to repeat several times. So it may take several days to months to complete this entire process. Whereas with our uh, optimized test method, the entire process has completed, to, completed within the six hours. And uh, these investigations, we have uh, filed recently uh, as an Indian uh, patent. And this uh, method uh, actually allows uh, the cells uh, for full charge and full discharge applications. What is happening uh, in a commercial cells, the, the, the nowadays commercial cells, uh, due to this SCLR breakdown, due to this SCLR characteristics, we are not operating the cell full window, full operating window. We are limiting the operating voltage window in order to, uh, in order to improve the safety aspects and in order to, um, uh, in order to uh, prevent the SLA growth mechanisms. Whereas with our test method, with our defined test method, these all cells can be extended to the, its uh, end operating voltage limits. So when we are uh, increasing our, uh, expanding the operating voltage window, what happens is you can you can increase the utilization energy density of the uh, cell. So which can uh, improve the uh, uh, range anxiety as well as it can extend the cycle life of a lithium cell. 
so uh, we have i can i would like to show you how we have fabricated the lithmann cell uh, in a in a, uh, a large scale uh, and how we have implemented this lithmann uh, formation method into the uh, the large scale that i am going to show you now so this the, the lithmann cells are like we are already said the lithmann cell components are highly uh, moisture sensitive so these cells we have to fabricate it in the, within the dehumidified rooms and the electrodes here we can see the electrode uh, electrodes are uh, we are making at an like a, at an one batch around 30 centimeters width and 300 meters once the electrode fabrication is completed then we will go for a drying and uh, slicing the electrodes according to the required dimensions of the cells and then we will wind the all electrodes together and making as a stack this stack contains the both cathode anode and separators together and that separator can avoid the short circuit between the cathode and anode and once we uh, made the stack and then we will uh, give the tap connection and this tap connections are are uh, are uh, uh, sources for the current uh, carrying and current feeding and once the stack is uh, fabricated and we can put it in the case and then we will go for the laser welding and and uh, once the laser welding is over then we will go for uh, once laser welding is over then we will go for the electrolyte filling uh, with the successive cycles vacuum applying and then we can uh, uh, fill the electrolyte and then once electrolyte filling is over then we will go for the uh, cell formation so we can see here there are many number of channels are uh, uh, connected and then it, it's like almost the space is almost uh, equivalent to the cell manufacturing uh, plant place so you can imagine it will take huge amount of space and the capital cost will be used and before uh, dispatching the cells we used to do the uh, safety uh, abusing conditions one uh, using uh, accelerated rate colorimetry once the safety uh, conditions safety uh, conditions are met then we will integrate the battery to the uh, vehicles and then uh, we can uh, and then we have demonstrated our technology with our uh, formation uh, uh, optimized formation uh, method and in overall i would like to tell you uh, we have uh, with this uh, optimized formation method we have reduced the number of channels and in one batch for example if we make 400 lithmann cells these lithmann cells in the conventional method it takes 400 uh, it needs 400 channels and it may needs uh, more than uh, a week time right but whereas here with our test method uh, it is limited to only six hours formation so these all 400 cells we have completed the formation within a day and these uh, uh, formatted cells uh, we have validated with different applications like using bicycle and then we have demonstrated with the uh, e-scooters and then we have connected to the uh, solar uh, lamps so uh, these all applications our uh, test methods uh, these all applications are uh, given uh, indication that our test methods are well optimized and it is well economical also so uh, thank you very much uh, this is what i would like to uh, share my experience with you all well dr rika thank you so much for your presentation it was very informative and it was wonderful how you walked us through um sort of you know the the need for the research that you do and then the importance of the research that you're doing um a few questions one is if thinking about the the application of this research and this um reduced charging time that you're finding can you talk a little bit about you know for somebody who's looking at purchasing an electronic you know a, an e car or e-scooter um what what is the implication of your work for the consumer who is looking at buying a product like that with such a high energy demand and also one that needs a lot of time to recharge 
uh, yes, first we, we, we have to uh, look at the cell properties that we have to uh, initially investigate with the initial cycles, whether the cells or the battery as processed well formation cycles or not. If the cells are well formatted at initial cycles, then it can allow us to even rapid charging also. Mm -hmm. right. So that, that is one important. Mm -hmm. And this can be detected based on different approaches. Several approaches are there. One, we can see the identifying the cell internal resistance or we can identify the initial charge discharge capacity loss. At the beginning itself, if the, in the beginning initial cycles itself, if there is no capacity loss in the charging and discharging, which indicates that the SA formation was good. That confidence will allow us to define the fast charging test methods, rapid charging test methods. Excellent. And, and then the safety of that obviously increases. Yes. That develops. Yes. Once the SA formation uh, forms, as I said earlier in, uh, during the, my presentation, mm -hmm. this SA layer uh, primarily dictates the cell, form, uh, cell performance as well as the safety of the lithium ion cells, individual lithium ion cells. I think this is really wonderful because we do hear, you know, we see in the media, we hear in, in stories that there are issues with the, you know, with charging um, electronic vehicles or electronic scooters. And I just want to um, reiterate that the, the safety of that is something that is being developed and looked at from many perspectives. And this being one very important component of that safety. Yes. That's awesome. Yep. And then from a manufacturing perspective, you obviously spoke to the cost involved um, and the time involved in, in this. What is the process to go from your labs to the patent to the uptake in the manufacturing industry? Yeah, our process actually uh, clearly uh, confirms that. Uh, it is well optimized and the entire, like uh, in the process itself, the SEI formation and the stabilization we have uh, identified. It was well defined actually. So this process method, for example, when you are uh, going for large uh, cell production plants, it may needs huge number of channels and it may, it may needs use space also. Mm -hmm. Right, so that capital investments are uh, the capital cost can be reduces. So once the processing cost will be reduced, then what happens is the selling price is also going to be reduced. The sell uh, cost will be reduced. Right, so then it can be uh, it allows to uh, like you know uh, reduce the ownership cost also, who are using the cells, uh, uh, like uh, the devices related to this uh, battery uh, integrated one. So the overall cost is also going to be reduced. So this method actually uh, uh, benefits for manufacturers side also, as well as, as we are saying, this protocol is uh, improves the uh, improves the SLA uh, characteristics, so it dictates the safety. So what happens is for end users also, this method will be a benefit. It's fantastic. I think when we speak in um, terms of cost savings, it helps us. You know, going all the way back to the beginning of your presentation with that beautiful slide of all yeah. the applications, it really does help us think about this. Um, as part of our green energy future yes. in, um, in a really doable way from a manufacturing perspective. So, right, fantastic. right, right. Um, I love this. And I want to thank you for uh, informing me on what an SEI layer is, because now I feel like I have a great understanding of that.
Thank you very much. Yes. Um, Balapa, we speak to a lot of students who are very interested in being part of the green future for our planet and for our well-being. And I wonder if you can just speak to what your career path has been like. How did you come into this space, into this very specific research that you do that's obviously going to have um, big implications for all of us? Uh, well, uh, it is very interesting to share about my experience, how I uh, uh, chose in this field, especially. So when I was in uh, BTEC, we are very uh, interested in uh, contributing our uh, abilities into the uh, green energy technologies. So, and this green energy technology, for example, whatever we are uh, Today, the technologies are developing. In every technology, the battery is going to be one of the main component. And this battery technology, actually, we can say the green uh, energy driving technology, we can say. So it is actually changing our world into the greener place. And it is also well interdisciplinary engineering uh, technology it is and i have a motivated i had motivated and in, in, in the early stage where how the materials can be uh, store the energy and what is the lifetime of these materials so these questions have actually made me passionate towards more uh, uh, technology side and then as I my passion into the green energy sector side at that time the lithium battery technologies like we are fortunate that the lithium battery technology is also uh, developing so this is a one best uh, good choice for us to contribute our uh, means our uh, uh, part into the uh, battery technology and then that's how we chosen this field and it is very encouraging to us nowadays it's wonderful it's so um it's so lovely to meet people who have um such passion for the work that they do and that was very clear from your pres presentation yeah in our yeah discussion. yeah yeah thank you excellent well, I, I would like to thank you very much for your presentation and more so for your work and the contributions that your work is um, giving us for a more sustainable future. And um, so thanks for, thank you for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you for joining us for today's episode. For more of these wonderful conversations, head over to ul.org or you can find us on our Future of Safety Science YouTube channel. We'll see you there for more ways to discover the fascinating world of safety science.